or maybe I wrote the wrong word in and or I forgot a word so just to deal with that so I said uh, so I'm gonna just read through it and so you know people with accessibility issues say you're blind um, and you're going to use a, a text reader it's probably best if somebody reads it to you because even those text readers don't even know how to say the words correctly so I suggest the need for counter compasses so that in this previous video I was I suggest the need for counter compasses for VR headsets so that children or professionals writing in cards uh, need a device to compensate. So we need a device, something that goes inside of the car to compensate for the orientation of the vehicle with respect to the headset. So the thing is, is that you're easy, you can easily get dizzy uh, using a VR headset or an AR headset so people that are going to be using AR headsets for GPS this is uh, something I didn't cover in the video I mean covered in the video that I didn't write down was the idea of um, of removing land um, removing monuments um, I had watched a video about um, about um, the concern for Confederate reactions or reenactments um, that Black people don't like Confederate reenactments because um, it gives too much emphasis to um, to the slave trade, and there are people who um, saw the Confederacy as not being about slaves, but being about differences of interpretations of the states. And that's, I mean, that's you should have that historical stuff, but if you've got monuments that black people don't like then and I mean it, we need I think it's important that we know that in the past we had slave trade but it's um, for the sake of of um, not offending people we probably shouldn't have those monuments around and from the standpoint of somebody who's even a capitalist a liberal capitalist would probably do this if there is such a thing most capitalists tend to be conservative and the reason for that is that is that business idea that anything that's good for the consumer is bad for business any change is bad for business so um, any new change of the culture or the environment can it can either make you or break you it can either bring around a new market it can either take away from something you're always on your toes whenever you're a business person but the thing is is there's that idea, uh, that mindset that in their international community, that if you're more, if you're more aware of the complexity in the international community, you can see markets, you can adapt. People who don't know, who only know one language and don't know multiple languages, can't adapt to different environments. They can't adapt to change very well. This is known as, uh, through evolutionary programs that um, when they run evolutionary programs, and these are artificial intelligent um, environments, um, you, uh, environments you present to artificial intelligent algorithms, and you give them certain abilities, and then you see how they can compete or survive certain environments. That what you what has been found out through research of that is is that when you give uh, a when you give uh, something uh, an AI more uh, control and uh, more limbs and things like that, it's able to survive in environments that um, ones with limited control are not able to to um, survive in. Also, with multiple sen multiple senses you have the ability to survive in environments that others can't um, however with limited perception there comes great creativity um, and I mean it's to be, to be a comedian you have to understand you have to have experienced things that nobody has experienced and with that you can also shape the culture through being a comedian you can shape uh, interpretation um, you can there's significant abilities to being a comedian it, it means you can bring philosophy to people who would not accept a philosophy you can put it in terms of something they can understand and the irony will make them laugh but it'll also change their cultural perception 
because it's entertaining. Um, but being philosophical to somebody without being com comedical. I'm thinking of this on the fly. So people say, where do you get your information? It's like um, I've got little pieces of information all through my brain and they all fire off at once. And I just am like, oh, this, 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 this. And I pull them all together and then I, so it's not that I'm, that I'm telling lies, it's that I'm seeing things. I'm envisioning things. So if you think that I haven't done enough research, that's probably the case. I, it isn't that I'm jumping to conclusions, it's that I'm pulling from things in my memory. And your brain has limited conceptual ability, and also the, your, your ability, your education is going to influence your ability to describe, it's going to influence your ability to translate, it's going to influence all sorts of things. So being more educated also um, gives you the ability to talk simply but to choose your words and it's very difficult to communicate without interaction. Um, communicate simply for the first time to water things down so that everybody can understand um, is an art but the thing to keep in mind is that you will never be able to translate for everybody perfectly because everybody has different educations, cultural backgrounds that you probably will miss the boat with most people. And um, by having limited perception, uh, having only two eyes instead of three, having only one, two ears instead of three, you know, with limited perception comes the ability to, to have creativity, to be human, to sin. You know, if we, if God gave us absolute perception, we would be be given the per, the capacity to sin. We wouldn't be able to. And the reason some of the things that are in the Christian um, religion that are considered sins is because if it is from God, it will be made understood. It would be understandable if you start to understand the problem set that it's better to make it a sin to, to say that you need to do this um, because you're a, avoiding a bunch of complexity that only God knows, okay? And um, if you don't experience this in other religions, that would be a good reason why it's probably better to be Christian. But also understand that the conservative Christians in America are not the same as Christians in other parts of the world and that it's really a philosophy and that th because of people's cultures they um, and because there are some people that prefer simplicity some people that that prefer complexity some people want to know more some people want to know less some people um, can talk dirty and and understand dirty thoughts and some people don't want dirty thoughts they want simple they want something that they can talk to their kids with so things that you can talk with adults which is really you know adult humor adult situations those things you can't communicate to children so and certain ideas are just so and so the thing is is complexity makes the it it, it can either dull it for somebody who can't, who doesn't have an interest in getting complex, or it can it can be interesting for somebody who understands all of the words, the details, the the delving into the details. Um, I have a stepsister that hates the fact that I free associate. That's what she calls it, and free association is really that you're jump you're you're jumping to all these conclusions you're you're starting to delve into lots of little nooks and crannies of the idea as you're talking and um, people can say that you're losing track of the subject and I do it all the time and the reason why is because I because I if I don't talk about it then I'll lose the information I'll forget it and so I tend to go into lots of detail and when I see something I feel it's important so I'll bring it up but...
So let's get back to the text. And th this text will keep me on point. It'll be, this is a lot easier for me to look at the text and keep on point than to get into a lot of details. And sometimes I will, I will delve into the details that are in the text. Um, so I find out things like that. And when you've got a headset and you're in the car, you're going to need, um, you're going to need something to compensate. However, the headsets that got cameras in them, they can compensate for the orientation of the car. And it's not only, I, as I was writing this, I realized that it's not only the compass, it's actually the, 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 um, the use of the um, accelerometers. An accelerometer, what it is, is it's basically a spring. Um, it's like a weight with a spring inside of it. And then it has um, something that detects how far the weight has gone based upon the spring and that permits it to determine if there is a gravitation, if there's a change in gravity. And so the accelerometers will um, determine if you are, if your head is rotated in a certain way. Um, however, accelerometers don't work very well with a uh, compass. So you need a compass to determine where north is. And so that determines the rotation of your head in one axis. And then the other axis you can determine if you're tilting your head one way or another and, and so so if y if the y axis is the rotation of your head so the compass goes to the y axis x and z are um uh, x is usually looking up and looking down um when you're looking forward and z is usually cocking your head to one side or another those those are considered the three degrees of freedom and so you need compass for one you need accelerometers for another and then uh, in order to determine translation in space that is moving left to right up and down forward and back um, and so um, up and down is Y side to side is X and Z is in and out okay um, that's the common interpretation that how they wind it down those are the, the variables that they use to, to interpret where you are in space. And rotation around the X is rotation around the the side to side. So that means you're forward um, if you're looking up or down. As you're looking forward, that's your X in, uh, rotation. The Y rotation is turning your head from left to right. And the rotation along the Z axis as it is Z axis is going in and out of, of your perception. It, it is cocking your head from one way to another. So it, it, you need the XYZ for rotation and then XYZ can also be described where you are as you're placed along the X axis, as you're placed along the Z and the Y. And those are called translation coordinates. Um, so rotation and translation is how they separate the two and they call them also six degrees of freedom that uh, and that you need six degrees of freedom to determine where you are in space and how you're looking at things how you're cocking your head and that's all that's needed to know inside of a computer that's how it's able to move objects in 3d space it's how it's able to but then there's another another um skit another a degree of freedom which will never involve but we may involve in the future and that scale scale on the x scale and the y scale on the z and that's the size of the thing so you have to scale things so anyhow um i just delved into 3d graphics there but the thing is is that um is that uh the the headsets um will need a, a device that attaches to your vehicle that will permit people in the vehicle to determine their orientation with respect to the vehicle. However, VR headsets that have cameras could compensate for this by knowing, by finding all the edges of, uh, by looking at the video that's coming in and determine um, the orientation and the shape of the environment, finding, um, finding um, reference points 
and using that to determine the orientation the, and, and of the of the headset and that's what's used on the quest to determine where you are in the room um, it looks for it uses all those multiple cameras to to uh, and it correlates the information in each camera to determine where points are in space and it looks for like corners it'll look for corners not edges so much but it'll look for corners and those corners can help identify uh, points of interest and it can use that to determine and it might as it's as you're moving around it might understand or see or either see or not see certain corners in the room and that helps it determine where it is with respect uh, what information needs to be looking for next so if you were to move into a hallway it needs to it it needs to know something about the space to determine um, your orientation and um, also putting your hands in front of your face is going to change uh, what it knows about the space and it may just stall so um, that but a way of getting around that with other VR headsets is to use these little these little um, sites that you put around your these little devices you put around your room that determine your orientation of your headset with respect to those things and they can use radio waves and if they use radio waves then it permits um, it, it it wouldn't matter where you were you would be correct if it uses infrared then it's line of sight and that would prevent that um, from you know if you were doing anything that involved your arms and didn't use the hands uh, the handset so to use with the quest the ability to see your hands is going to limit your ability to to work with certain kinds of programs like exercise programs if you're doing jumping jacks are fine but if you're doing anything that puts your arms um, turns your head and your arms get in the way um, th then and if the cameras are obstructed if you're putting your, your hands close to your face or over the cameras it's going to limit the ability for the headset to determine its orientation on the in translation its movement around the, the room and possibly also the, the rotation um, however the the headsets have accelerometers in them also if you're in zero G then you lose your ability to have the accelerometers so um, people that are in space shuttles or in, in spaceships um, or people that are in planes and um, gravitation is going to affect the accelerometer so you can't determine orientations there um, you would need so you just have to delve into the details of that um, also, I cover ideas of schooling, what ideas about COVID has done, disrupt the world, things that could be improved through the use of VR, AR headsets. And um, I think I, yeah, I think I talked about that to some detail. Um, lastly, I cover reasons that we don't need to, don't interpret information the same way, why we need to listen to multiple news sources. Keep in mind that news must communicate with a subset of all interpreting viewers that um, I mean you you must communicate uh, ideas that are well understood across all cultures across all words this is the reason why you when if you see a Disney movie everything's watered down is because they're trying to market for a multicultural multi and international market and so and they're trying to do it for children and so they try to hit everybody they try to hit multiple birds each bird being in a different country uh, each audience is a bird and you're trying to hit them all with one stone and so what happens is you lose a lot of the a lot of the necessary detail that would make it an interesting story and so Disney has a complex thing that they try to do because they're trying to sell that to everybody and they're only trying to create one uh, in a, one perspective um, if you've if you're in India and you wonder why it's so easy to see 
good productions like Simpsons and Baywatch. This is how it was translating me. Even though you probably don't see Baywatch, I, I had an instructor, a medial one one who was Indian, and she said that at the time that um, it was really tough to come up with a good production um, because the the facilities needed to do good pr production um, were not available and so it was so much easier to syndicate content from America than uh, good productions from America because we have Hollywood and we have significant tools and resources to create good quality movies um, it limits the kind of movies that can be made uh, it, in India, they can't afford to spend the kind of money we're spending on movies in America. And so their uh, movies that are um, that are specific to their culture are very hard to make or they, or they have to get a lot of people involved. And it tends to turn into musicals. Um, they like musicals. Uh, they tend to be very good, uh, very bad quality musicals. And it's because of the limitation of the recording resources. Um, sometimes it's just not delving into things enough. Maybe their their um, their audience doesn't need a whole lot of quality in order to have a, a good experience. Um, also, my teacher said that um, in in theaters in India they have a tendency to stand up and dance around. So it's it's more a party than it is just a theater where we sit in the theater and we watch and don't talk in India that it's a different experience so if you didn't understand that you probably would uh, it would you know in other cultures ideas have developed um, in areas that have not developed in our culture and that's the problem with cultures that when you when you get um, movies that are easy to syndicate it has a tendency to um, it has a tendency to uh, homogenize the cultures throughout the world and that's good because then people see more eye to eye and it's easier people won't war they'll war less because their cultures will be more um, alike but it can also be bad because the cultures um, people are going to it could be good in that the cultures the differences in the, in the understanding might bring about necessary items and understandings into our own culture that will make it fuller and richer and um, that's the reason why you need to bring more people from other nations into America so that when we produce movies that th that it it is more relevant to their culture um, and that their cultures influence ours However, I don't believe that everybody needs to speak multiple languages. I think it would be better if more people speak English and that whatever is unique to their language, that somehow it enters our language through slang and we, become, we get a richer language. There's going to be language loss that happens with every generation, um, but the you need to... Uh, you know what? I've been covering the mic, so I don't know how many, uh, how much I've been. You know what? And the other thing is, is my my microphone. Oh, it is. It is. I mean, my headset is hooked up so that it permit it prevents you from hearing too much echo. But um, anyhow, um, but yeah, um, culture affects it, and the syndication at the time it was seen that the syndication of content um, was homogenizing cultures and that is, is making the cultures all pretty much the same is the reason why in other countries people tend to like American stuff uh, is because um, it all of our all of our stuff is created in China it uh, it spread to other countries we had like hand-me-downs we would end up sending stuff to other countries People would start to like our movies more um, because there was things, ideas in our movies that weren't available to their culture. Their culture had certain taboos that we don't have taboos 
Um, we've gotten over the sort of things that they still are dealing with. Um, we're advanced, but we're advanced because we bring in all cultures and we try to um, try to we try to get uh, we try to become a better um, we are become better as a result of bringing in these cultures. That's the diversification. But then we have this little continent with inside of America, which we call the South. And that continent is, contains a lot of people who don't want to change, who don't want foreigners, that who don't want diversification, who who are resistant to change, and um, those people exist in other parts of the world too. They they're resistant to our culture. We're um, resistant to everybody else's culture, and um, if we're one way to fix that is by letting other people become a part of our culture that um, if you're from the south permitting people in other parts of the world to also become southerners like the british like um, they like westerns they like talking like southerners in america and there are even people in other countries who might start to take on a southern culture they might like the simplicity in the of the southern culture or the complexities in various other ways that uh, the Southern culture has, but um, not everybody's going to want that, and um, it's what leads people to listen to country music because country music doesn't tend to have a whole lot of of um, and that's that's the country view is is that the the tendency toward uh, simplification, the tendency toward um, becoming broad instead of vertical. Verticals are becoming um, detailed, becoming um, more versed in information. This is the idea that um, if you become open to anything, your brain will fall out of your head. Um, the, the idea there is, is that um, your brain can only handle so much. Um, however, and they, you can still be relatively complex and still be simple in how you interact with other people. Um, how, and there's also this idea of sophistication where you use very, um, very, I think this is my understanding of sophistication, is that you use very loaded terms, very loaded ideas to describe and you determine from the context and use of the words to determine what the information means. And um, you dress in a style that is adequate. You, do, you um, present your ideas in an adequate way that can be understood across all people who are sophisticated. Um, and they call it, if you say somebody's a sophisticated, if you say a girl's a sophisticated lady, that means that she is, she is like a debutante. She's, um, somebody who has become versed in um, in behavior in the way that you set your forks on the table and the way that you are um, and it's a different sort of view um, people take on you know different sorts of ideas and philosophies you know people who want to become Jamaican or like I mean take on reggae but not all Jamaicans are reggae are into the the Rastafarian style they some of them might actually be interested in being country western and wearing a a cowboy hat and living on the range and completely identify with that lifestyle um but the thing see the thing is is that um if you go outside of your area of of um of, of, um if you go out outside of your comfort zone, um, you have to be prepared to understand multiple cultures to get more detailed in the understanding. And um, that's my perception of conservatives is they tend to um, prefer the way things have always been done. They tend to resist change unless it's necessary. But when something drastic happens like this virus 
um, and were unprepared, um, there was somebody in the past that got into some details and was trying to convince us, and we just were resistant to that change um, because change costs. It, um, it costs you money to change. It costs you money to prepare. Um, there are times when preparations don't cost money in cases of um, preventive uh, care in health care. Uh, you do preventive care to avoid health care costs down the road um, by being more trying to predict things that might happen to you, but spending a lot of time predicting things limit your abilities to do things you want to do. Um, and if you are versed in Southern culture, uh, you would understand the reason why a lot of people are pushing back against the precautions that were taken with COVID. Um, if you're a part of the Jewish community, you're going to get, and you were in New York, you got hit hard by COVID. It changed, they changed, their, their culture is likely going to change, at least in New York, as a result of COVID, to become more accepting of people around them because the Jewish culture um, tends to prefer their own people, as just as Southerners do. Um, they're going to prefer people that are within their clique. And um, the thing that's great about the internet is people get to experience and become versed in other people's cultural perceptions. Uh, but not everybody wants to do this. And the internet has also created people who are are spreading misinformation that are taking in that information, not being able to properly interpret it, not wanting to really understand it, pushing back on it and um, watering it down or misinforming themselves. And it's um, making a lot of Southerners, um, if they're the Southerners who are not into the verticals but are into the broad um, the simple living, um, they're going to become more limited in their ability to to adapt, and and if if you have cultures around you that are more capable than a southern culture, if the southern culture is not able to adapt, then it gets lost. Um, there are I'm sure that there's a lot of in India, there's a lot of pantheism, and the problem with pantheism is is that it's brought about by um, by superstition, uh, by believing that there's a god for everything. Um, you pray to all these gods because um, you think that by appeasing them, you are going to avoid, uh, you're going to experience less um, of the harsh realities that confront you. Some people don't have that, don't do that. They um, delve into having multiple personalities and each personality deals with the situation. If they're being abused, they'll develop multiple personalities. That's what your brain does. Um, and there were lots of superstitions in the Jewish times with the Christians. That was the reason why Jesus walked on the water, some people think, is because in the Jewish culture of the time, they saw that the lake was the entrance to hell. So people thought that um, if they were to be out on the water, this is the reason why the apostles were afraid of the water is because um, being out on the lake, the reason why they were terrified, it wasn't from drowning, it was their fear of hell. And that was the reason why Jesus walked on the water. So you see, that's an amount of detail, something that a normal Christian would probably not know something about. Um, and it's necessary to understand something about a culture, but you can't retain everything um, in a text. You have to go back and read other texts. You have to interpret from multiple sources. That's the reason why when you get news, it's going to be watered down for everybody. If you watch a Disney film, it's going to be watered down for everybody in the world. Um, it's going to be liked by everybody in the world, um, but it's it's a matter of the the um the Venn if you've heard about Venn diagrams, that's those circles 
where that you draw on a on a paper and you can show what everybody agrees on if everybody's in a circle each culture is in a circle you can find all, where they intersect you try to determine where they intersect where they're different where each where each culture is like the other where all the cultures are like each other um, psychologists use these things to determine what your problem is by finding all the areas they need to cover in order to determine to pinpoint where you are uh, there's a kind of uh, I fin idea diagram in how um, triangulation works with um, with GPS satellites the reason why it takes so long for a GPS satellite to determine where you are is to determine um, which radio towers which can only determine if you're um, within a ray uh, uh, if you're in in a in a circumference uh, I mean if you're in a not a circumference in a an angle an orientate uh, actually radio towers can't even term angles they can determine um, how far you are from them and so by just by counting how long it takes for your signal to get to you if you're both got the same time um, if you're both at the same time if if you go to radio tower and you set your your watch to a certain time and you move away from that radio tower it's going to be able to determine how much of a difference between your time and their its time you are and it can determine your distance based upon how long it takes radio waves to trans to to transmit from one place to another and um radio waves are not, i think are not the same as uh, light rays they're um it's a radiation and radiation is low i think it's low frequency um radiation is low frequency high frequency is um uh, short wave and then you got long wave and you know i don't understand the full physics but the thing is is that if you understand that a tower can only count how long it takes for it for um your signal to get to it then how many t towers do you need to to find out if you're um in a circle it is the two spheres uh, have a common intersection that's a circle um three spheres have a common intersection and that is going to be um where it is in respect where they intersect um where the the third sphere intersects with the circle that the other two spheres intersect um so whether you're on one point or another point and then there needs to be well there are three and then you need four spheres to determine where which circle is relevant i mean which point is relevant on that circle um, then you need another sphere to determine well actually to determine where you are um, with respect to um, three-dimensional coordinates and so you need multiple GPS satellites to determine where you are um, in the in the world and that's what takes so long whenever you whenever it says it's just calculating gps satellites that's what's going on and it's like a venn diagram it's trying to find the intersection of uh, but whereas in venn diagrams it's the area that's you're trying to it's the area not the actual intersection of the circles or the spheres but the area that intersects between the circles and so th those various ideas if you didn't understand something about Venn diagrams or things I've talked about, then when people talk about things, you don't see things. You can't visualize. That's the um, the art of visualization is the ability to know much more about the world. And the more you know or the more you think you know, um, the better you're able to communicate those things to other people. And it also helps to interact with people that develops more of an understanding um, as you interact um, the things you don't know you interact with other people you're able to develop an understanding because a text is not going to be able to interact with you uh, reading a book presents you information but you don't know 
the details of that information, even looking at dictionaries or Wikipedias or things like that can give you some understanding, but it helps to also interact with people because they're probably going to open you up to understand your locality, your the culture and the locality. Um, and I'm going to jump back to what I was talking about with India, the syndication of content, and that um, uh, prevents... Um, I'm going to have to do another screencast because these videos, if they last too long, then uh, my thing won't be able to store them. But um, anyhow... I'm going to I'm going to drop off of this for that reason so